The rain was still pouring down as hard as ever. Alright guys, welcome back to some more Umineko when they cry. In the visual novel, it's currently 3 a.m. Uh, so it's pretty late. Um last part, to recap last part, we had uh, uh, we had the child calling not he once again. <laughs> Even though the external lines are uh, off, as we know. I mean, to be fair, we don't know we, that, that, that it's happened this episode as well, but we do know that it happened in the previous episodes, so it could be fair to assume that, it ha that it's happened in this episode too. However, it wasn't. It hasn't been said in red, to be fair. I don't remember any red truth regarding the external phone lines ever being cut off, so people could be lying about that. You know what I mean? The servants or cross or whatever could have been lying about that in previous episodes, but... If we choose to believe that, it's fair to assume that the culprit is purposely doing that on purpose so the, the people from within the island cannot contact the outside um, the outside uh, world, right? From people outside the island. It, it, this way you can shut Rokinjima in its own world, basically. Which, again, is an, all, another argument for the culprit is more likely to be someone from within the island and not someone visiting because that means the culprit has knowledge about the phone lines and knows how to cut them off from the external lines I'm just saying the culprit knowing where the goal is the culprit most likely knows where the goal is knows how to so knows the solution to the riddle uh, knows how to cut off the external phone lines the there's more details too it's it it, it 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 definitely points to the culprit being someone from within the island, rather than I don't know a Rudolph or a Hideyoshi or a Rosa, for example, right? Or a George. Uh, I've said for a long time that George is sus, but um, you know, uh, he hasn't done anything stinkingly sus uh, to actually warrant that susness, other than having a sus personality. <laughs> so although that could be. That could be the ruse. Maybe George is the true culprit all along. But yeah, nah. Um, so, uh, yeah, anyway. The child calling Nazi. <laughs> um, that happened last part. He he already he knew he already knew that Nazi's favorite season was, was Autumn. And he even wrote a card for her that it said Autumn that he put on the clock in her room. And he asked her what her favorite season is. Because even though Nazi... He, well, Natsu, in her, in her name Nazi means summer. Uh, her favorite season is autumn, not summer. And this person apparently knew that and is claiming to be Natsu's child and is claiming to know of what happened 19 years ago, which really spooks Natsu. Um, and he forces her to stay shut in her room for the entire rest of the night and, and sleep, which is important. We gotta remember that, that the culprit for some reason has done that. Um, assuming the phone call ever happened to begin with, that's another important part. Step one is to actually learn whether the phone call ever happened. You know what I mean? If you argue that Nazi is the culprit, then the phone call never happened. Nazi's lying about have, getting this phone call that forces to stay in her room the entire night. For example, uh, and we'll see eventually that Erika Furudo or Furudo Erika will call out Nazi for being the culprit. When that may not necessarily be the case, although it could be the case, is she, is she heavily suspicious? Suspicious? Yes, that I, th I think that's undeniable. But uh, let's not get hasty. And uh, the other thing that happened last part, well, the other big thing that happened last part was Battler got the heads ring from Beatrice herself, most likely the culprit, uh, left the letter there and gave Battler the ring. Everyone was pushing on him to wear it and he wore it. Cross and Genji came in and saw Battler wearing it. Genji was surprised. Cross ma made expressions as if he wasn't aware that the ring was there so more than likely even the narration said it that more than likely Cross wasn't the one that put the letter there uh, and maybe it wasn't Genji either. Of course if it wasn't either of them and it wasn't Nazi and the cult and the cult and it's not Shannon and Kanon because they're both in the parlor. It's not Battler. It's not uh, a <clears throat> any of the family members. It's uh, and this, the other servants are uh, Goren and Kamasawa are in the guest house along with the cousins. 
then the question obviously becomes who left the letter there you know what I mean uh, obviously someone must have done it <laughs> and if you assume that this someone isn't someone that has sneaked uh, in from the outside world like Nazi's child quote-unquote um, then uh, however Virgilia has confirmed that it's not Battler at the very least. Virgilia is in red that Battler doesn't kill anyone and Battler's not the culprit. Now I'm gonna assume that she is including episode 5 in that, right? I'm gonna doubt that Battler is the culprit from episode 5 onwards as well. It is unlikely that Battler is the culprit after all. I mean, it's already been confirmed that he's not the culprit from the first 4 episodes, but. Is he the culprit from episode 5 onwards? Is that a different question because now he's no, not, no longer the main piece. It's Burnt Castle, or I should say, Frudo Erika. So, hmm. Uh, otherwise, one last important thing that happened last part was uh, a great, great scene from Kraus showing how great of a husband he is. That's, a, that's not a scene I'm gonna forget. Um, Cross willing to sacrifice himself for his family so that Nazi and Jessica can continue living a good life because even if he does go down he has saved enough uh, of, of, uh, of he has stored enough um, insurance money for uh, for Nazi and Jessica to live on their entire life for good and I'm sure let's say Battler does become the head he's not so heartless not give them a cut of the gold you know what I mean so if that does come to pass and Cross does fail, there we go. Obviously, we know that they're going to die tonight and tomorrow, but you know what I mean. <laughs> well, technically, it's still today because it's 3 a.m. right now, so it's it's all gonna happen today. But um, speaking of which, uh, and that Cross scene was very, very impactful to me because it shows that. Cross is a great husband and he does care about his family a lot and he has been put under a lot of pressure. I am going to defend Cross because we can call him incompetent and I'm not gonna deny that he's incompetent. Become incompetent, god damn it. <laughs> um, but he does actually try his best for his family. He does care and for that, uh, I think we shouldn't downplay him completely. I think he deserves some respect for sure. Uh, honestly, all the husbands have shown a matter of resolve for their family. I mean, remember Hideyoshi in episode 3 when he was slapping <laughs> Eva, <laughs> Eva Tiche, going, You're not Eva, slap! You're being childish right now. You're not my wife. I married a great woman that has, uh, has morals that, and that wouldn't do all this stuff. And that was a great scene from Hideyoshi. That was probably Hideyoshi's best scene from the whole visual novel. That, that really impacted me a lot with Hideyoshi. Uh, and even Rudolph. The way he compliments Kitty is saying, "When I'm in a pinch, I always ask Kitty for help. Uh, for, for when it comes to, when it comes to, because she's really smart, right? He he always says, oh yeah, Kitty is always great for helping me out.' And uh, of course, Rosa's husband is amazing as well. The way he left for milk valiant, valiantly to um to help out uh, his family, right? I mean, <laughs> might he really needed that milk that one day he decided to leave? So." Uh, Definitely, Rosa's husband, big shout out to him as well. Uh, a lot of respect uh, for him too. Um, you can tell he cares a lot about his family and uh, for sure, uh, hopefully he comes back. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Rosa, I'm sorry, Rosa, Rosa. <laughs> Rosa, forgive me. It, the joke was there, come on, Rosa, 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 please. It was funny. Listen, Rosa, it was funny. Like, I'm sorry, you know what I mean? You, you, you deserve the best, alright? You and Maria deserve all the best, but, uh... Yeah, your husband did you in, not gonna lie. Um, I, I was just talking about how great the husbands of all the siblings are. Except for yours, Rosa. You know what I mean? Rudolph, great husband. Kraus, great husband. Ridioshi, great husband. And then you got... Rosa's husband, we don't even know his name. Uh... Man just said, alright, let's marry Rosa, let's give birth to Maria, and then after like five years or whatever, I don't I don't know when he left. He was like, I am I am I'm, I'm gone. I am gone. He's he was like a, a shonen protagonist's father. He's like, listen, I'm gonna give birth to you, then I'm gone. Peace, bro. Peace. I, I, I'm I don't want nothing to do with my child. <laughs> 
That's such a that's such a cliche in shonen. All the protagonists, their parents. I'm bye. You listen. You're an orphan. Nah, <laughs> grow grow up on your own. <laughs> That's tough. That's tough. That's tough. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a big cliche. But um, I guess Muddy is good to be to be the shonen protagonist. <laughs> Imagine, imagine. Anyway, um, uh, but yeah, that's what happened last part. Now we can get into this part. I babbled on for long enough. Uh, sorry, Rosa. Thank you for the wink, though. I'll never forget. <laughs> I'll never forget that wink and smile. <laughs> Alright. The rain was still pouring down as hard as ever. Here we go. This weather was supposed to continue all day tomorrow as well, which was making me feel a bit depressed. Oh wait, given the time, that's today, not tomorrow. That's what I mean, it's 3am. But that doesn't really matter now. Eh. I'm sleepy. That's important that he's sleepy. Because that would mean that even if something does happen in front of him, you could argue he's sleeping. He's sleepy, so he didn't witness it. He wasn't aware of it, if that makes sense. That's important. And the same thing when someone's drunk, right? They can come out, come by with all sorts of fantasies when they're drunk or sleepy, uh, even though they didn't really happen, or things happened that he didn't even see, or he didn't, wasn't even aware of. So, with half asleep eyes, I opened my umbrella. The large drops of rain pounded against it mercilessly. Okay, he's going back to the guest house, I guess. <clears throat> Technically, they had called and entered a family conference at 1 a.m., but the post-match scuffles are still dragging on. Aw. I was really jealous of Fonti Rosa, who managed to slip out of there at that time. She cleverly got away by saying that she'd check on Maria, who might have been staying up too late. Nice. Thanks to that constantly involving me, I missed my chance to escape. And they made me stick around until now, 3 a.m. What on earth did they spend all that time deciding? Nothing got decided at all. They just kept on arguing about who said what, well, like elementary school kids. They must be tired too. I'm sure that's why they keep dragging on with the same pointless questions. I no longer felt any shock or anger towards them. I guess no painkiller works better than drowsiness. I left them behind and finally returned to the guest house. I've never seen that guest house opening visual before. That's the first time I've seen that. That's an answer arc special. When I returned to the guest house, the lights were on in the lounge downstairs. Interesting. Why were they on? Not only that. I could even hear people chatting inside at 3 a.m. Okay. Apparently, some people were still awake even at this time of night. Nanjo and Goro are both here. Despite the late hour, Goro san and Dr. Nanjo were still awake and chatting. Mm -hmm. Plates and cups were lined up on the counter. And it looked almost like a bar with Gorasan as the bartender. After not noticing I had come back, it looked as though Nandra th Dr. Nandra had finally realized how late it was. As Gorasan made to top off his glass, he declined with an exaggerated, e exaggerated gesture. Hey, yo, Gora, you, what, what are you trying to do with that? What are you trying to do, Gora? Hmm? Hmm? I'm trying to weaken him, huh? Weaken him for the night. Easy killings. <laughs> That's enough, it's already too late to be up. You're such a good person to chat with, I hardly noticed. We'll have to do this again sometime. Is the discussion with Cross Sam and the others still continuing? None of my business. I spoke carelessly with a big yawn. 
Oh! Erica is here too! Ooh. You all have more stamina than expected. Okay, I wasn't expecting you to be here, Erica. I was expecting you to be with the cousins. It's quite a surprise. You're a surprise. Your, your whole existence is a surprise. <laughs> Battlers ha is having the same reaction as I am. <laughs> Don't worry, I haven't said a word about you know what. <laughs> Erica could be seen on the sofa. She had taken her shoes off and was lounging around as though she owned the place. I enjoyed listening to you immensely, Erika. Very impressive for everyone so young. But she's, she's lived for a thousand years, is what you don't know. <laughs> It's merely the trivial knowledge of Frudo, Erika, and she's making a cat face. Look at her mouth. Very much cat. Erika posed by picking up the hem of her skirt. She was lounging on the sofa with her feet up, so it didn't look remotely elegant. Oh, huh. <laughs> Eleganto! That's a... That's a spy family reference. Okay, where's Auntie Rosa? Um... Auntie Rosa, you say? I'm interested too, of course. <laughs> Smart. She returned around 1 a.m., but she went up uh, straight upstairs to sleep. Okay. That was probably the right choice. She'd been going along with that conference, conference for so long. I feel like flopping down in bed right away myself. I've had it. I'm tired enough that I might flop over right here. Oyasumi? Don't you have to get up early tomorrow to make morning to make breakfast, Gorosan? Well, doesn't he have the midnight shift? Oh, no, that was Canon and Shannon, wasn't it? Bruh, preparations for breakfast have already been made and it's 3 a.m.? That's crazy, bro. This guy's so ahead of the time. <laughs> I wish I, I was this ahead. I wish I could be like. <laughs> I wish I could be like at noon. Oh, preparations for dinner already made. No. Dude, preparations for dinner don't start until like 5 p.m. minimum for me. <laughs> I'm like, alright, it's 5 p.m. now, but by the time I start making dinner. Oh. What do I do? I have no idea what to do. Alright, let's just spontaneously think of something. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not that ahead of myself. Uh, Alright, as always, I have full confidence that you will enjoy it greatly, so please look forward to it. In Goro-san's eyes, the family conference is an open stage on which to display his culinary skills. He's probably so pumped up, he won't even get sleepy. As she laughed at how youthful Goro was, Erika stood up. This acted as the sign that it was time to disperse. Please enjoy your sleep, everyone. Leaving the clean up to Goro san, I went to the bathroom and then climbed the stairs to the second floor. So you first went to the bath bathroom and then you went, okay, okay, okay. Oyasumi, everyone. That's interesting because that means. During the time, Battle went to the bathroom and then upstairs, some other things could have been happening. Alright. These old bones have stayed up a little too late. Good night, Furudo, Erika. Oyasumi. Then, in the upstairs hallway, we split up. Dr. Nanjo went to his own room. Erika went to her room. Oh, disappear. And I returned to the cousin's room. 
I couldn't hear any sounds of playing coming from the cousin's room. They're probably sleeping then. Okay, they already gone to sleep. Already? It's 3 a.m., mate. What do you mean already? No surprise at this time of night. That's not... I, that's, a, that's the wrong usage of already, mate. If they're still playing, they would have been playing... They would be, I've been staying up way too late. I mean, Rosa coming back and going to sleep early probably also helped uh, with, uh, with forcing them to go to sleep as well. Or maybe they're all dead. Dun dun dun! First Twilight is already starting. Imagine. <laughs> uh, no, actually, I don't remember. I remember that we got to see the first Twilight that's already at the start of this episode when uh, Erica announced Nazi and stuff. Yeah, before a little before then, but I don't remember who was part of the first Twilight murders. I believe Rosa was one of them, though. Of course, I remember that Rosa was one of them because Rosa's. <laughs> you know, I love Rosa, but uh. There is a chance. There is a chance. Some of the cons were murdered too. Was Jessica one of them? I don't exactly remember, but we'll see. We'll see. Nazi for sure isn't one of them, and neither is Eva. I want to say I don't think Eva or Rudolph. I'm not too sure. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Will the first Twilight deaths are uh, soon, if they are even gonna happen, because Battle has already solved the riddle, which is probably what Beato wanted from the from the beginning, right? So why would she continue doing the murders? I mean, we'll know the murders happen anyway because we saw people dying at the start of the episode. But still, I wonder why they would kill at this point now that someone has already solved the riddle. Why would that happen anyway? When I opened the door quietly, as expected, the room was already pitch black except for a small nightlight. Everyone was already sleeping in their beds. I bet they, had a, they all had a great time horsing around. They probably had a ton of fun staying up late and talking about their youth. If only I hadn't found the gold, I could have fun had fun spending time with them. I imagine, how many people would rather have fun spending time with children than finding 10 tons of gold? 20 billion yen worth of gold. Imagine. Imagine. <laughs> only Battler. Well, only the cousins, I guess. I'm already tired. So tired. Forgetting even to change my clothes or brush my teeth. I crawled into bed and immediately started to sink into the marshes of sleep. Ah, could have brushed your teeth at least. Oh well, too bad. I'm a big proponent of brushing your teeth before going to sleep. But all right, fair enough. I could, you know, I don't. Yeah, all right, fair. Ah, today's been so insane. I wonder if that old prick is still in that family conference now. You mean your dad? How does he not get tired? Come to think of it. What was it that old Frick said when we parted company? What did he say? Oh, not this again. I feel like he said that before. It's about you? Wait, okay, nah, this is different. This is different. I feel like Rudolph has said this before, that there's something you want to talk about with the family. But it's the first time he said that it's about Battler. So now I'm interested. Now I want to know the truth. Is Rudolph finally going to reveal the truth that Battler is not actually Osmus' son? Is that what Rudolph is going to talk about? He's going to talk about, alright, Battler, the truth is, you are my child. But the woman who gave birth to you is not the one you thought it was. <laughs> You're not the one you thought she was, I should say. <laughs> it's not a, a human is not an A. Anyway. I'm sure it's more stuff about being the successor. Eh. I don't even want to hear about it. Well, now I hope Rudolph actually survives till tomorrow. I hope I was right early when I said that I thought Rudolph is already alive. Uh, but murders will happen, so let's see if Rudolph will be too caught up on thinking about the murders uh, to even think about telling Battler what he was going to say. If I tell you about this, I'm probably gonna get murdered. This is mirroring episode one then. This is mirroring episode one because in episode one, Rudolph around his death, around his family, before it even happened. But then how does Rudolph know that he's going to die? How did Rudolph know in episode one that he was going to die? Does that mean Rudolph really will be one of the first Twilight murders? If I tell you about this, I'm probably gonna get murdered. How does Rudolph know? 
So then he said that he, he's probably going to die tomorrow in episode 1, right? And now he's revealing that it's something that he said to Battler that led him to his death. What did Rudolph say in episode 1 to Battler then that led him to his death? To, uh, to his murder, I should say. Same thing, but more specific, more important. Um, I'm probably gonna get murdered. What did Rudolph say anything sus to Battle in episode one that could have led the culprit to go? Ah, you told him too much. You're dead now. <laughs> I'm because I'm sure if it's about if it's about Asumu, I don't know. I don't know. Let's keep reading for now. I don't know. I'll murder you whenever you want, you old rat. And then, what was it he said next? What was it he said next? Okay, so it is about Battler's birth. It is about Asumu. Why will he get murdered if you tell Battler about his birth? Because, yeah, now I don't remember anything Rudolph told Battler in episode 1 regarding Battler's birth. But he still said he was going to die. He's probably going to die that night. And now he's revealing that Rudolph's probably going to die if he tells battler about his birth now now i'm wondering is this connected to the culprit or is this connected to nazi right nazi is not the sh we can't really be thinking that nazi is battler's mother battler is supposedly born 18 years ago there is a chance Battler was lied to and he was actually born 19, 19 years ago and he's Nazi's child Maybe not It's about your birth We know Asumi is not Battler's mother anymore We know that Ushima Battler is Ushima Asumi's son But just not her birth child Battler has a different mother than Asumu, his birth month is different. Rudolph must know some details about that. Alright, well, let's keep reading for now. We won't get anywhere theorizing about it now because uh, it's very vague. But Rudolph somehow knows that it's going to lead him to his death. Does that mean that Rudolph knows what the culprit is planning? No, that can't be it either. What could it mean? Does Rudolph already know who the culprit is? Has Rudolph already had contact with the culprit? And so Rudolph goes, Alright, I'm gonna tell Battle this. I'm gonna go against the culprit's wishes and tell Battle his birth about his birth. Even though the culprit doesn't want him to. And that's why he knows he's going to die? But why? Why is Rudolph... Why isn't Rudolph just... I don't know. Um, why can't Rudolph... Defend himself against the, the murderer. Why? Why is he so confident that he's going to get murdered? Why can he not get himself a gun from the mansion and then shoot who he thinks the murderer is? Or, 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 or you know, if, he, if, he's had, if he's had contact with the murderer, you know what I mean? How is he so confident that he's going to be outplayed by the murderer and die? Why does he feel like he can't do anything about his murder if he tells back to this? You know what I mean? Why? If I was Rudolph, I'd be like, alright, I'm gonna tell Battler this, but I'm also gonna defend myself from death. Why, why do those have to be mutually exclusive? Alright, let's, let's keep going for now, because like I said, we won't get anywhere talking about it now. My birth? Probably just something about the noble Ushirume lineage. Not interested. Just let me sleep. Alright. Glass break. Oh man, this is where the glass break happens. Hmm. Fair enough. Revenge for 19 years ago. Okay, this is Nazi. The sound of crashing waves. Here we go. This is Nazi. This is Nazi chapter. Are we going to find out who this child is now? Alright. Crashing waves. Now we've heard the roar of the sea multiple times in regards to Nazi. 
And I don't really get the context. What does the Rolling Sea have to do with Nazi and this child from 19 years ago? I don't know. The sound of the tide surging. The noise of the sea breeze. Whenever my headache torments me, these are the sounds that fill my head. Oh, so these are the sounds that fill Nazi's head. Why? Are those the sounds you heard 19 years ago as well? My inability to bear a successor placed me in a very difficult position within the Ushuruma family. I tried every medication that was said to promote fertility, every incense, incense or herb, but nothing I tried had any effect. So she was really struggling to give birth. Right. Until I was blessed with Jessica 18 years ago, I was ashamed to even call myself a wife. And even then, you gave birth to a girl. Just, I mean, I mean, like, I, like I said in previous parts, there's nothing wrong with that. You have to think about this from the context of Ushiromiya family, 1986, successor to the Ushiromiya head. You're the wife of the eldest sibling, and you gave birth to a daughter instead of a son. You know what I mean? You have to think about this from that context, and not from a context of in general. There's something wrong of, with giving birth to a daughter because there isn't. And also, it's a 50-50 chance, so... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> the whims of heaven? I mean... No, it's just the efforts of two people and re the reproduction uh, the organs. W whims of heaven? Whims of fate? May lead... Bum, 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 bum. Ah, anyway. Nah, no, I'm not gonna sing Persona 5 right now. Right, we'll, we'll leave it there. <laughs> the whims of it. It's not fair to place all of them on the shelf. I mean, I guess that's kind of true, right? I mean, in a sense, you know, in procreation, you cannot control what happens after the deed is done. You know what I mean? Like, you have that one night. You do this. You do the thing, and then what happens afterwards? You can't really control. You know what I mean? You can't control. Boom. That th this is it. Pregnant now, or you can't control. Boom. That's it. That's the gender it's going to be. It's true. The rest is just the whims of whatever fate you're supposed to have. So, you know, if you even give birth to a child to begin with, if you're even fertile to begin with, that's not. That's not much for you to decide at that point so you can get unlucky and never never actually get pregnant that's actually a, a very common issue that uh, people struggle to get pregnant so it's fair it's not really not his fault but you know what I mean she try I mean the if you really want to get pregnant best you can do is take uh, take the medical uh, take medical advice from a doctor about what, what you know What's you know? Uh, what is the most likely thing to do to get you uh, pregnant? You know what I mean. There's also specific days you can do it to make it more viable. For example, you have to time it with with your periods, right? You know what I mean. If uh, I don't remember exactly when this is this this is uh, I I don't I don't have I don't I haven't uh, I haven't read a bunch about this at all since I had it in class at some point but uh something around the lines of timing timing it with when you're timing it at some point between your periods in a way so that fertility becomes most likely you know what I mean because there are times where you know where uh, you're more likely to uh, there are more times where it's more like there are days where it's more likely for it to work, and days where it's less likely for it to work. And you want to make sure it, it's on the days if you really want the child, it's on the day where it's like very likely. You know what I mean? All that stuff. I'm sure. Again, I'm sure parents who want to give birth have thought about all that stuff, have discussed it with their with with doctors and all that. Uh, that's not something I can talk about right now because I haven't given birth myself. I uh, obviously, so I uh, obviously am out of depth, out of de out of depth. What am I saying? Uh, out of out of experience regard to this. But uh, anyway. 
The waves of fate may lead you. <laughs> but I was always just told that they didn't understand the reason. That's tough. They analyze your organs and everything, and they stare like, I don't know, you should be getting pregnant. I, I, I can't help you. <laughs> cr cr cross isn't good enough. <laughs> Oh no. Ever tried to convince father that I was a failure I was a failure as a future headwife. It was a time when Kinzo was also very disappointed in my husband's repeated business failures. On the other hand, Eva's husband Hideyoshi's business was growing well, completely the opposite of my husband's business. He was the only person who could bring father good news. In that case, perhaps there could be no blame placed on father if he decided to lend an ear to Eva's words, or even accept them without question. It was all my fault because I couldn't bear a child. Okay. Okay, okay. This is Beatrice's definition of sin sinless, by the way. Because she said that Battler has a sin. And again, that is according to her definition. That's, this is, you know what I mean? Because how do you define sin? If you say Battler has a sin in red, what does that mean? What is a sin? So. What's a stork? One second, guys, I'm googling what a stork is. I'm gonna use incognito mode just in case it's a, uh, you know, just in case it's not a, uh, okay, stork. Ah! Ah, here we go. It's a bird. What? Birds. Storks are large, long legged, long necked, <laughs> waiting birds with long, stout bills. They're just long, 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 long. Everything is long. Uh, carried here by storks. If it needs to be shot, it should be the stork. Okay, so these long, long birds, long legged, long necked, long stout bills, large. Everything is long about these law. They carry babies. Is this kind of. Is, is that how you explain. That's how you explain uh, giving birth to children, right? Mom, how was I born? I don't know. A bird carried you over here to our house, and boom, boom, there you go. Or, or how how you explain it to Emily in ReZero? I don't know if you guys watch ReZero, but uh, Emily for the longest time thought that you know she was super was about to kiss her. She was like, no, 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 don't kiss me. I, I'm not ready to have a child yet. And and <laughs> and and then super goes, oh gosh, darn it. How old are you? Alright, anyway. Thank you. But... I don't know if you guys are going to be a good person yet. I don't know if you guys are going to be a good person yet. I don't know if you guys are going to be a good person yet. He could have just done what he wanted with that appealing amount of money he had. Dang. Get money can't create children though, who? Sure. Do that. Pay 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 someone what wait. Yeah. So this Thinking it, thinking it the duty of anyone in possession of large amounts of money, the head gave a lot of charities. One among these, the facility known as the Gospel House. Oh! Are we, are we going to talk about the orphans? Okay, okay. Orphan organization, this is interesting. Gospel House had been given an especially large donation. Possibly because he had old ties with that place. Hmm old ties to that place. Orphans in Shannon and Kanon, taken from there to be servants of the Shuma family. Yeah, 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 I want to know more about that. Let me know. Oh, you know about it, Beato? You know about it. Okay. 
furniture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Almost everything matched with the character in on Nom. So we've heard of Shannon, Kanon, and Lunon before. Manon and Lenon, first time we've heard of them. Um, but Lunon, we've heard of before. Canon mentioned his or her name before, so I think it was a she, but I'm not sure. Children from there. Can we confirm that these are actual children that has worked that have worked in the mansion? Hmm. Okay. Children from there. Okay. 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 So most quit after just a few years. Is this connected? Like my friend theorized. To the whole homunculus stuff about how he put Beat in a homunculus body. You know what I mean? Is this connected to that? Homunculus, children, orphans, cloning. Maybe Kins was trying to clone people. Like, I think that was part of what my friend teaches as well. Like, Kins was trying to clone Beato because he loved her so much, he tried to clone her. Uh, and that clone Beato is then the culprit. <laughs> And so, meaning that the cop is one of the gospel house children, which again does tie it into it being Shannon or Canon or some or Lunon or some one of those children to be in the culprit. And Kins was just trying to trying to clone Bert because he was so obsessed with her. I don't know. <laughs> That's why because a few years of wages from working here would earn them more than enough to live on their own. Right. Experience as a servant for the Okay, it's a great for the resume. But Shannon never quit! These servants will typically quit after a few years, but Shannon, nah, she stayed. She's been here for 10 years. She's been here since she was 6 years old. That was wild. Ugh. And Kano has been here for 3 years, but... Uh, hmm. <clears throat> hmm. Hmm. They didn't want to live on their own. Hmm. Okay. An adopted child. Don't tell me Battle is one of those ad ad adopted children. Don't tell me that's what you're trying to connect the previous part, the previous chapter with this chapter with. <laughs> you're trying to say Battle is one of those adopted children? One of those Manons or, uh, you know what I mean, Lenons? <laughs> Don't tell me. Or, don't tell me... Or don't tell me that you're trying to connect one of those adopted children to the ch to, to the ch to, to a child that... Don't tell me you're trying to connect one of those adopted children to a child that Natsuhi... Um, to, the, to the child that, that is claiming to be Natsuhi's son. Because if not, if Nazi tried to adopt a child because she can give birth to a child from from this gospel house, right? If Nazi tried to adopt a child from there, and was like, "Oh yeah, this is my ch this is my child now," but then something happened 19 years ago which cursed her, and now that child is back for revenge. Is that what you're trying to say? What did you just say? But again, wouldn't that lead even more suspicion into it being either Shannon Kano that's the culprit? Oh! What? Accept this infant as my grandchild? 
Wait, Kinzo straight up just did that. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. That's insane. Okay, wait a minute. And there's Kimasawa. And that's the infant. That infant right there is is the one. That's the one that's coming back for revenge for Nazi. And that's also, I guess, the culprit. That that heavily, heavily puts suspicion on Shannon and Kanon. Heavy! Heavy suspicion on Shannon and Kanon. Being that this infant. Right here. Wait a minute. No, wait. No, no. 19 years ago. They could be lined up at their age. Shannon Cannon, both 16 years old. Could be lined up at their age. This could be 19 years ago. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Alright. Apparently, the baby Kamasa was trying to soothe didn't like the air in the study at all. It kept on crying as if it hated it here. We do also have to be asking ourselves, did this conversation ever happen? <laughs> you know what I mean? We know stuff with Nazi delusions and all that, but alright. Alright, we won't get into that now. Let's let's go along with this story for now and we can we can think about whether this conversation ever happened at at a later date. That's crazy. So as though she couldn't hear our discussion in the slightest, Kumasawa kept on persistently trying to cuddle the baby. This made its crying get even louder. Oh, Kumasawa, you're cursed. Virgilia, you're cursed. <laughs> あの日の悔しさを忘れたことはありません。私とてこが欲しくなかったわけがない。でもいくら祈ろうとも身ごもれないのです。私の体に原因があるのではないかといくつもの名誉を尋ね歩きました。しかしそれでもいくら努力しても
But Kinto, he had four. <laughs> Kinto had four of them. He had uh, Cross, Eva, Rudolph, and Rosa. But each of his children, Rosa, Rudolph, uh, Cross, and Eva, they all have one child each. What's that about? I mean, it's, it's, it's weird. It's it's not weird, but it's also but it's still, you know. You think maybe one or two of them would have more children. You know what I mean? I can accept Rose only having Maria, for example. But you think maybe I don't know. Evan Hideo should have, you know, would, would give George a sibling, or maybe Eva was so focused on giving George all the success that she felt, and she and Hideo she felt like if they had given birth to another child, Eva wouldn't care. Wouldn't give that child enough affection because she's so focused on give, making sure George becomes the next head. Maybe? But then what about Rudolph and Osmeed? Osmeed died 6 years ago, so at any point between 6 and 18 years ago, she, she could have given... Unless her body was cursed as well. I mean, we know Battle's not actually her her birth child, so... And to be fair, to be fair, Rudolph and Kitty did give birth to Angie. So I'm saying, why do they all have one child each? Technically, Battle has a half-sister. So, so yeah, you're kind of right there. That is a good argument against me. But I mean, even then, assuming Battle isn't actually Kitty's child as well, Bat Rudolph and Kitty only have one child. After Angels born six years ago, they never decided to have another child. They were like, ah, two children is enough. We have Battle to take care of as well. Although Battle is already 18, so. They won't have to care for him much longer, if, if basically at all, to be honest. So they could give birth to another child right now and take care of Angie. And they could have given birth to Angie another child and then taken care of them too. Battle would have been, already been an adult by the time they would have need, they, they need to take care of them. Battle can take care of himself. I don't know. Hey, listen. Listen, I don't know. It's just an interesting prospect. But to be fair, it's just an interesting prospect. Because even, even then... Battle and Angel, only two children. Kinzo had four. I guess, I don't know, Kinzo's rich is money. Kin Kinzo was rich, he had plenty of children. No, the, no, not if his children had any multiples, well, several multiples like that. Uh. Uh, but I wanted to be overcome that effect and somehow be granted the miracle of my husband's child. Cap! Yeah, yeah, is Jessica your counterpart, Gap? That's not a bad theory, you know, that, Jess that Gap is Jessica's counterpart. She could very well be Jessica's counterpart, I could see that. Because Beato and Gap are good friends, right? So... Just saying. If we're pinning the culprit down to Shannon, Shannon and Jessica are good friends as well. Maybe? That's a connection? Maybe. I could be thinking too deeply into it though. Oh no. The living reminder of my failure. Oh no. <laughs> Ronov is a demon, he's right in front of you. Look at him. And Gop. Oh no, why would you do that? Oh no, 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 no. I mean, I know why you do that, but oh no, no. That came back to haunt you. Of course, that wish was also granted by demons. Oh no, Nazi. This is the curse. This is how it happened. This is the, this is the villain origin story. <laughs> On that day, I left the baby with one of the older servants and went to think about the future in the rose garden. No, that's a lie. I just wanted to clear my mind of everything. The baby's cries were aggravating, so I ordered the servant to take the baby to a place where I couldn't hear. By a place where I couldn't hear, I meant somewhere far away. Oh. Yes, I wished. I wish for the servant to take the baby far away and never return. Naruto, Yukizuri no Akuma ga 
ナツヒ様のその願いを聞いてしまったのですがしてどうなったのかそれは悪魔が願いを叶えてくれたとしか思えない奇妙な事故でした The woodland path from the rose garden to the harbor is certainly well suited for a pleasant walk. And from time to time, if the mood took you, you would undoubtedly feel good to veer off the path and take a walk through the trees. I mean, that's how Rosa found the、uh, mansion. However, wouldn't that, be, wouldn't that be the adventure a little too far for a walk with a baby in your arms? No, Nazi. Nazi, what are you doing? You did not throw the baby off the cliff. Oh, Nazi. Oh, no, 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 no. No, Nazi. No, no. Tell me it was an accident at least. Tell me it was like, like Rose in episode 3, where she was just playing around with Beato. And Rose was like, Watch out, Beato. Don't fall off the cliff. Whoa. Whoa. Beato fell off the cliff, woo, and she, she's dead. Beato Ricci died 19 years ago, rest in peace. That wasn't Rosa's fault. I mean, it was Rosa's fault, but it also wasn't. You know, it was an accident. Beato died. Nazi, this is sound, this beginning to sound like you threw the baby off the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about the same height that Beato fell off from when she died, yep. And both of those. Wait a minute! Both of those events happened 19 years ago, you know? Just saying. Just saying. b e t t e time with Rosa happened 19 years ago, and now this is with Nazis also happening 19 years ago. It's all happening in 1967. 1967 is an important year, y'all. Oh, not through the fence, Nazi. That's a brutal death. Wait, Nazi, you're arguing that a, that a servant, that a servant was the one. Oh, oh, oh yeah, because you went for quote unquote, you left the baby to a servant, and the servant ha, you know, had an accident and the baby died. Right, right, right. It totally, you didn't carry the baby here and threw it off the cliff. But because you felt so guilty about it, you blamed it on a servant? Huh, I see. The only concern is that she was threw there by b e c k o n e d of a demon. Mm hmm. Yes, that servant totally believed that. <laughs> um. Let's see, I got an important message, y'all, so I'm gonna have to be right back. I don't know for how long though, but I'm gonna have to be right back. I'll make sure to,、uh, make sure to do, put a timestamp if it is too long.
here, I'm here, I'm here. I'm here. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hope that wasn't gone for too long. Was that gone for long enough to warrant the timestamp for that? I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. All right, um, so she was lured there by a demon who heard your wish lured that servant there. Right, that servant, quote unquote. Again, I don't. I'm starting to believe it wasn't a servant, but it was actually Nazi that is doing all this. Don't tell me she's trying to say that they both died. That's wild. They both fell in an accident. <laughs> Alright, Nazi is so great, great, fantastic. Nazi walked over to this cliff through the baby. Hey, listen, Nazi, I'm not here for your copium. You went over to this cliff and threw the baby off. <laughs> Alright then, alright then. If this really did happen, Nazi, how, how did you know? How, how did you. Did you go over to this cliff and find them, them over there? What, what, what happened with their bodies? What, what's up? We both know that doesn't make sense, Nazi. You can cope about it, but we both know that's not what happened. <laughs> that misses is mine. Okay, yep. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. Continue having your cope friends telling you it's not your fault. Did she think about it any further? Now, listen, y'all. Listen, y'all. Before y'all get heated at me, alright? I'm not saying Nazi is a uh, is a horrible person, very bad person. How could she kill a baby? I'm ne never forgetting not Nazi. Da 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 da. I understand where she's coming from. I understand why she did that. You know what I mean? I get it. You know that doesn't mean it's a forgivable action, but I get it. I don't hate her, obviously, but I mean, but I mean, she did do it. She did do it. She did throw that baby. Okay? I'm, I'm saying it happened. I'm not saying she's wrong for... I mean, she is wrong for doing it. But I'm not saying she's uh, this horrible creature that doesn't deserve any love whatsoever. I'm just saying it happened. It was it was wrong. I I get it based on the circumstances that she, she, she did it. But, uh... Yo, that's wild. Alright. So... It was about a 10 meter fall, right? Now, more importantly than the actual death is the baby could not have survived that, right? 10 meter fall, they had to die from it as well. And she was, and she was what? A child as well? Well, she, she might have been like 18 or something, I don't know. She died from that fall when playing with Rosa, okay? Beato did die. Um, and it was a rock, rocky ground, 10 meter fall, Nazi threw the baby off the cliff. The baby doesn't survive that, does it? Uh, if we go with the baby that somehow survive it, is it realistic for it 19 years later? For you to come back to haunt Nazi like this, to give her this whole f this whole phone call, and have all this stuff happening, or would it be more realistic to think about it in the sense that someone someone followed Nazi to this destination and saw her throwing the baby off the cliff, and for some reason waited 19 years before doing these murders, and is calling Nazi out on on it. The last explanation that I got right off my off, right off the rip, right off my head, is uh, is um, <clears throat> is uh, let me think about it. it. Yeah, it's that the whole phone call is obviously copium. Phone call never happened. 
Datsu is just beginning to feel real guilty about what happened 19 years ago because it's getting to that point in the family conference where they're about to find out that Kinzo uh, isn't is actually dead and she's beginning to reminisce about uh, about the things she's done and the phone call is kind of a is part of it right it's part of her copium suffering in a way that is one explanation as well but uh, let's keep reading <laughs> ねがえども叶えるか否かは神と悪魔と魔女の気まぐれそなたの罪はないよい我は殺したよい何くそなたを不憫に思い我は赤子を連れた使用人を崖へいざないその下に導いた不幸な事故があっただけではありませんか <laughs> I love how they're being they're being blunt about it. They're not even like lying to her. Like listen, if you can't accept that explanation, blame it on us. Don't worry, it wasn't you. Like they're they're not even hiding from her. It was her fault. She was the one that did it. But listen, blame it on us, don't worry. <laughs> Yeah, that's why that's why we exist. We exist so you can blame all the bad things you've done on us. <laughs> You're not the one that is doing these bad things. We're the ones that are doing it. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> Understandable. Okay. That's right. We we here we're promoting killing babies. Let's go. You have done nothing wrong. ほほ。夏日に嬉しいその喧嘩。わらわが顔ではないか。わらわは後ろ見分け古文錬金術師。黄金の その程度の年月。瞬きにも足りぬとすれ。<笑> As the middle-aged female servant cuddled the sobbing baby, she walked on a small path through the trees. Nazi had told her that, that the baby was too loud, so she tried to get as far from the rose garden as she could. She was completely unaware as to why she'd gone out of her way to head in this direction. <laughs> yeah, she was totally unaware. <laughs> However, the sobbing baby suddenly stopped crying. Something was reflected, reflected in its eyes, but the servant couldn't tell what. However, thinking that the baby had stopped because it had taken an interest in something, she headed in the direction of the baby's gaze. The baby had seen a group of gold butterflies disappearing off into the trees. And on the other side of the trees, the servant saw a woman. <sighs> who? It was someone she didn't recognize, someone who couldn't possibly have been there. The baby stopped crying and stayed in that direction. Then, the servant's legs started to automatically carry her that way. 
Oh yeah? That really happened, that's crazy. The woman couldn't disobey. She was completely overwhelmed by Beata's gold glowing eyes. She walked lightly, as though through a, through a dream world. At some point, the scenery around her had changed, but she did not notice. She could not notice. Though this should have been Rokunjima, at some point it had become the garden of a mansion she had never seen before. It was a garden she had never seen before, even grander than the great rose garden of the Rishirume family, a garden of gold roses. There stood an arbor, and a woman wearing an elegant dress beckoning her. There was a man who looked like a butler, and the tea he poured with a beautiful gesture had a very nice and enticing smell. It was as though they were telling her to join the tea, their tea party. She couldn't disobey. She had to go to the master of this rose garden, this golden rose garden, and give this child as an offering. Surrounded by these gold roses, which you would never be able to enjoy in this world. Sleep. Gap. Hi. Tick! When Gap snapped her fingers, a pitch black hole opened at the woman's feet and she was swallowed up along with the baby. The sight that the, wo that the woman and the baby witnessed in the very next moment probably burned itself into their eyes forever. Mm -hmm. The two floated in the air and looked down at the gold rose garden spread out below them. Ah, that's tough! Below their feet was not the ground, but an unobstructed view of the golden rose garden which stretched as far as the eye could see. If one could have, could have this scene imprinted in their mind as their last memory, that would be such a merciful way to die. Then, the woman and the baby were swallowed up by the golden sea. The thud was remarkably plain and remarkably quiet for the sound of two lives being taken. However, it was a perfect fit for the entertainment at a tea party of witches. The unhuman party. Darkness swallowed the woman and the baby and slowly expanded to engulf the, the entire rose garden. The sound of the wind grew stronger bit by bit. Was that TV static? Was that noise? What was that noise? It was the roar of the sea. The two who had died after falling from a great height into a thicket of golden roses were gradually engulfed by the roar of the sea, engulfed by the scenery of the beach below the cliff. <laughs> You spotted them, huh? <laughs> you you went to this random spot where these two died and spotted their, their, their deaths. You knew that the servant had walked in this direction of the path of the ro of the pathway that goes from the rose garden to the harbor. You just knew that they happened to go this way and knew to find their bodies off this cliff. Okay, Nazi. <laughs> Mm 
そして赤ん坊を死にまして私はお父様から赤ん坊を預けられ三日も経ないうちに殺してしまったのです I mean, if there truly was a servant along with them, maybe Nazi also pushed the servant off to kill the to kill the servant. Okay, so Rosa still lived on the island this time, right? Because this is 19 years ago. I guess Rosa was young enough, where the rest of the uh. The rest of the family, uh, Rudolph and Eva, were old enough to have been out of the island by this point. But Rosa still lived on the island. Which means maybe... Maybe Rosa, um... The Rosa scene with Berto, where Rosa killed off Berto, might have happened... Should have happened around that year as well. Right, so Nazi saw this as a perfect opportunity. Everyone else is gone except for me and my, uh, me and Kinzo. If I kill off the baby, only me and Kinzo would know that this that this baby appeared in front of us and died within three days. And you tell you tell me, Kinzo never never suspected you. Kinzo never went. Hmm. <laughs> Did not to kill this baby. Was it an accident? Alright. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, I wonder why. I'm actually interested in his reaction. Why why was it strange? <laughs> What? He's talking about Beato. What? How does this relate to Beato escaping being yours? Huh? I'm not interested in an empty cage. He's talking about the homunculus business again. When father learned of the accident, he kept on laughing and laughing, as though nothing could be more amusing, to the point that just listening to him had disturbed disturbed me. Perhaps something had come loose in his mind. That was the day that changed him. Father shut himself up inside the world of the occult even more than he ever had before. Hmm. When my husband came back, he was astonished to see how eccentric Father had now become. However, he had already accepted that this would happen sooner or later. Of course, my husband had heard about the baby. However, he told me that it was surely just some whim of Father's and to forget the whole episode. So I forgot it. Yeah, convenient enough he forgot it. It was an unfortunate accident. No, there wasn't an accident at all. I forgot everything. Even that the baby had existed in the first place. After all, it was a twisted nightmare which lasted not even three days. That's right, it was all a nightmare. What if Nazi killing this baby 19 years ago is, the, is an equivalent of Rosa killing... Or, yeah, killing quote unquote Beato 19 years ago in episode 3. Do you have such an equivalence in every episode? Not that I can think of. But 19 years ago is a mysterious year, clearly. I don't want to remember any of it. The cliff, the broken fence, the roar of the sea, and the wailing of that baby. Say it in red. I dare you. 
真実なきが人間の世界。はは。人間の世界に信用できることなどありません。That's crazy. I've been there, Joel, but that's crazy. You know, that's your answer. そうね。ベアトは確かに殺したわ。でも、人間の世界では生きていることになっているのかもしれない。ほほ。本当に生きているのかどうかはどう。Okay. 実は生きていたというのですかあの高さからあの岩場に転落してわからぬだが落ち着けそやつはどうそなたを憎もうと真実は事故だ<笑>そなたを恨もうなどお門違いもいいところですでもでもたとえ指一本触れていないとしても私は心の中で落ち着け19年前の男が何を恨もうと叫ぼうとそなたを追求できる罪などあるわけもないだから落ち着け19年前の男はわらわの来客として迎えてやろうぞ<笑>気分の謎を解かれ、お役はごめんかと思っていた矢先だ。わらわの最後の客として、もてなしてやらねばな。ね、<笑>面白くなってまいりましたな。ゴールドスミス教の秘密を守るのに加え、19人目の来客、さらに19年前の男とは。そうね。金蔵が生きていると主張する私たちにとってエリカは19人目ねその19人目の子が19年前の男面白いじゃんワクワクするわ相手にとって不足なしわらわの茶会の来客が一人では物足りないと思っていたところよ来るがよい愚かに<笑> Further, Erica is Lady Burn Castle's piece. In that case, whose piece is the man from 19 years ago? The voice which could be faintly overheard through the receiver was not to ease. Through the receiver. Okay, so now we're going to the other side of the phone call. Now we're going to the man's side that called her, that threatened her ish. His perspective and the way the phone call sounded to him. So please don't tell my husband and daughter. When heard through the a receiver, even these begging screams, which would have shaken the heart of anyone who heard them, could be listened to with a heart of ice. Never mind. Both of the, both of the um, the voices sound like they're, they're in a. They're coming through a call, almost as if this is the perspective of someone who's listening in on both of them talk. The receiver was shut down violently. He knew very well how bad an aftertaste you could leave for the other side just by the way you hung up the phone. Johnny. 
This is Land Delta talking now. <laughs> it's Chenop says Land Delta. Okay. Um. That's how you interpret that discussion, Lambda. Did that discussion ever happen? Did it happen like you're, how you're interpreting it happened? Maybe it didn't happen that way. You can change your voice. <laughs> ho ho. Huh? Wait. So next is a horse tiny voice? Never mind. <laughs> okay, so she can do any voice and all sorts of fonts. Okay. Nice. Nice burn. Good one! Good one! <laughs> this was this must have been fun uh, for the voice actresses, right? <laughs> the voice actress for Burn Castle is telling Lambda's character who is voiced by a voice actress. Hey, you should become a voice actress. I imagine if I was the voice uh, Burn Castle's voice actress, I'd be looking at Lambda's voice actress and going, Hey! You should stop being a witch and become a voice actress. Wink, wink. And the other voice actress stop standing there like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> she suits you so much more than Angie, Angie did burn. Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess. Huh? Wait, what? Wait, even you can appear in this meta world? Alright, Erika, do your thing. ジョゲンソンにくっぷくさせてその顔を屈辱に歪めてやりたいわ。だそうよ。私に恥をかかせないでよね。エンジェより遥かに使える駒だってことを見せてちょうだい。え、お任せよ。ベルカステルキョ。
these murders and finding it entertaining and all that. I don't know if that's going to be a fourth wall break about how we as readers enjoy reading the story and enjoy reading about these murders and all that. I wonder if they're going to connect it in that sort of way, like the witches are kind of, you know, them enjoying what's going on is representative of us enjoying what's going on. You know what I mean? I wonder. <laughs> Not even Bernie's making cat cat faces. That was that's a weird cat mouth though. <laughs> Just like her human counterpart. それをズタズタに引き裂いて中身を引きずり出すことこそ私にいい私たちの数少ないご楽園ええ楽しく遊べるわよねえ見てみようベアトリーチェ本当のゲーム版はこんなにも楽しく遊べるのよ私が見せて
Yo, ooh, this soundtrack is ooh, 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 ooh. Wait a minute. Oh, oh, I really want to listen to this, but I do have to do an outro. Oh, I'm like, I'm, I'm really liking it. Oh, but I really should do an outro as well. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed this part of Minak when they cry. At least as much as I enjoy doing it. I'll see you guys next time, everybody. Uh, just, let's just hear the, what's a little bit longer. Let's just hear th this this music a little longer. It's soothing, you know? It's weirdly soothing. But alright, I have to end it there. Alright, y'all. Peace!